Think? Did you find anything? Yeah, I got a cooking video. Apparently it's about all the different ways to spice and cook strip line steaks. It's supposed to be good. It's called Stripped and Seasoned. Huh. Oh, and there's this one. It's a documentary about a group of senior citizens who are advocating for the right to walk around nude after they retire. Ugh. What's that one called? Stripped and Seasoned. Did you find anything? Uh, not much. Just a canoe. What? Oh, where did you even find that? It was in the bargain bin. Watch what you're doing with that thing. Oh, 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 now look what you did. Wait a minute. Paper Marriage? I know this movie. It was filmed in Edmonton. Aw, cool. Okay, we're definitely renting this. Yeah, I I'd be okay with either that one or, or the other movie we got from the bargain bin. Snow Day. As mentioned, this movie was filmed in Edmonton. And despite the fact that the cover shows New York for some reason, the official setting is meant to be Los Angeles. You know, I've always said that Edmonton and LA are carbon copies of each other. For the last six weeks, a two and a half million dollar feature film has been shot in and around the city. Sam O'Hong has been back in Alberta. The film this time is Paper Marriage, a romantic action adventure comedy. The movie starts out with our hero, Bo, played by Sam O'Hong who is actually kind of a big deal in Hong Kong Kung Fu movies. He's worked alongside the likes of Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. But was gambling at the famous Los Angeles Northlands racetrack? He isn't doing so well. He loses his race and is confronted by some loan sharks. He promises that he can pay them and then scurries off to try and make some money. After trying to earn some money, volunteering at the local school of acupuncture, he ends up at his uncle's martial arts studio. Interestingly enough, Bo's Uncle Sai is played by a local martial arts legend, Frank Lee, a kung fu grandmaster who's been part of the North American martial arts scene for decades. His martial arts studio, the same one that's used in the film, is still in operation today. Bo's uncle tells him that there's big money to be made in immigration fraud. He somehow convinces Bo to marry a woman who wants American citizenship. She'll get a green card, and he'll get the money to pay off his debt. Now we meet Jade, Bo's bride-to-be. She lands in town and meets with her real fiancé, Peter, who, by the way, is played by Alpha Chung, the director of this movie. Peter explains their plan. She'll marry Bo and divorce him two years later. After that, she'll be free to marry Peter, and they can both live together legally in America. But they'll have to fool the inspectors at immigration. Apparently these people are serious. They even show up late at night to inspect the relationship in their home, which I'm pretty sure is not normal operating procedure. It is! My wife told me it was when I met the guy who inspects our bedroom. We might have to talk about that later. Don't worry about it. My wife arranged it so he comes over in the afternoon, when I'm at work. So, Jade and Bo move in together, and start working out the ground rules for their sham of a marriage. The goons come to the door and once again threaten Bo if he doesn't pay. Hey Bo, how are you going to pay? Pay more time, can't you? Don't pay again. Wait, wait, that's it? Well, that's not very threatening, is it? He asks for one more day and they just casually leave? No wonder he's getting away without paying. Oh well, no matter. Now that Peter has the money for Bo, everything will work out fine. Except that, well, Peter has taken off with Jade's money, and now Jade doesn't have the money to pay for the fake marriage, or to get her green card. And Bo doesn't have the money to pay the goons. Bo blames Jade, and just leaves her there. Which leads to a very sad montage of her walking through 1980s Edmonton. When 
she gets back to his house, she pleads with Bo to let her stay. She vows to help earn the money to pay his debt, in exchange for him continuing the fake marriage, all so she can stay in the United States. Despite signing up for more experiments, the goons are getting impatient. Luckily, Uncle Sai breaks it up, and suggests to Bo that he earn money by entering the underground boxing circuit. He does so, and after winning some money in the circuit, the goons give him one last chance. If he can beat his ex-wife's new lover in the ring, the debt will be forgiven. If not, he's done for. You know, for all the shortcomings this movie might have, it actually has some pretty impressive fight scenes. Yeah, the choreography is actually pretty decent. You can definitely see the kung fu roots of the actors in this flick. Fast forward a bit and Bo has paid off his debt. All is well. In front of a scenic view of downtown Edmund, Los Angeles, Bo and Jade confess their like for each other? They decide to stay together and just see what happens. But through a mix-up, Jade and Bo come across a bag full of money. It belongs to a completely new set of goons, and the goons come after them wanting it back. This is what I don't understand. At this point in the movie, everything had pretty much resolved itself. Was there really a need to introduce a completely new set of bad guys? The entire movie, Bo's conflict is with a set of goons he has a legitimate reason to be at odds with. What was the point of resolving that one just to come up with a random reason to start a completely new conflict with virtually the same type of enemy? It doesn't make sense! No, no, that's enough of you guys. In order to move the plot along, we need these guys. Not these guys, these guys. Bo is ambushed at his home. And after being thrown through every piece of furniture in the place, he escapes down the Los Angeles River? Sure, close enough, I guess. But his wife Jade is taken for ransom. Bo locates a payphone at a local 1980s gas station and agrees to hand over the bag of money in return for Jade's life. They decide to make the exchange at West Edmonton Mall. Despite the fact that this movie has been set in Los Angeles, the thugs explicitly say they want to meet at West Edmonton Mall. So apparently the gang of thugs, Jade who is being held hostage, and Bo all somehow fly from LA to Edmonton, just to make the exchange. Oh, and Uncle Sai and all his friends came too. The final action scene in this movie is something to behold. We're treated to an extended and well choreographed kung fu fight scene between multiple good and bad guys. All taking place in what at that point was the brand new phase 3 expansion of West Edmonton Mall. They even take the fight onto the Santa Maria. They crash through the doors and curious Edmontonians finally get to see what's behind those locked doors on the deck of the ship. Except that's not at all what it looks like. This was a movie set built specifically for this fight scene. It actually looks like this. Eventually, the fight moves to the World Water Park. What is it about movies filmed in West Edmonton Mall always having people crashing through the windows over the water park? So Bo and Jade, still being chased by the goons, head up the Tower of Slies in an attempt to escape. With nowhere else to turn, the duo has no choice but to brave the original Skyscreamer water slide. Wait, this kind of sounds familiar. You know, you're right. Betty and Veronica did the exact same thing when they visited the mall. 
they too were being chased by thugs and took to the slides to make their escape. This movie came out first though, so it was the first film to feature a water slide escape and a crash through the water park windows. The goons follow, and just like in Betty and Veronica's visit, the authorities catch up to them and save the day at the bottom of the water slide. In the end, Bo and Jade lose the money, but they're happy anyway. They stay married, and presumably fall in love, spending their lives together in Edmond, Los Angeles. You know, that movie was a little hard to get through. The choreography was really good, but the comedy was a little too slapstick. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. It was kind of cool to see 1980s Edmonton, though. And West Edmonton Mall. Uh, dude, we live here. You can go see West Edmonton Mall anytime you want. No, 1980s West Edmonton Mall. Oh, that's different. Uh, are you guys going to rent something? I'm trying to close up here. You know the whole chain closed like a decade ago? Holy, how long was that movie? Don't rush us. We're still trying to make up our mind. That's it. I'm locking the doors. Fine, but I'm still taking the canoe. Start the car, Mom! Paper Marriage was released in 1988. So, it was filmed in the years directly following the mall's Phase 3 unveiling in 86. To say this movie is rare would be an understatement. I struggled to find a copy. It doesn't help that there's another movie out there with this same title, which was released in 1993. They're often mixed up online as well. The Rotten Tomatoes page for the 93 version shows the cover from the 88 version. All this makes it a struggle to find a copy. Although it apparently does exist on DVD, I couldn't find a copy anywhere. But then, I saw it listed on Amazon. There was no picture, but it said Paper Marriage, and it had the correct date, 1988. I was so excited to get my hands on it. Then it arrived, and this is what I received. What the heck is this? This this isn't Paper Marriage. This is, well, I don't know what this is, but that's not Sam Hong, and that's not West Empton Mall. Ugh, I was devastated. Then I found a VCD copy on eBay. Still sealed, new in packaging. If you don't know, VCD was an ultimately unsuccessful format, which was released in the years between VHS and DVD. If you've ever seen a Philips CDI, or Compact Disc Interactive, like this one, Video Compact Disc is the format which was used for movies. The main downfall was storage space, which resulted in poor picture quality and needing to swap discs halfway through the movie. I still find it odd that the cover shows New York as a location, even though the plot centers around Los Angeles. It's like they found a stock photo of any American city and figured that was good enough. And the same goes for the poster I found. It's pretty decent art as far as movie posters go, but it shows Bo jumping out of a skyscraper. That doesn't happen in the movie. My best guess is that it's a reference to the water park window scene. The poster also references the fight scene on the bridge over the deep sea adventure lake. Paper Marriage is one of those movies that I can't help but to laugh at. And I honestly found it a struggle to get through, but it has its highlights. A lot of the comedy just falls flat. Though to be fair, Comedic timing is hard to translate via subtitles. The best part of the movie by far is the end scene at West Empton Mall. It's well worth the wait. Or worth skipping directly to. Have you seen Paper Marriage? What did you think of it? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel. Give us a like and a share. Maybe even take a look at our Patreon page. And why not check out one of our other videos? All about the greatest indoor show on earth, West Edmonton Mall. Oh, and thanks for watching.